Hey you, come over here. Word on the street is you're looking for a piece of the action. Premium quality dice, yeah? Check these out. Got them over at MetallicDiceGames.com. The best part is, if you tell them I sent you, you can get them even cheaper. Use the promo code RBP10 at checkout. Makes the price so low, you're practically stealing them. <coughs> oh, gotta go. Don't forget to use the promo code RBP10. The Rancor's Brothel would like to thank Nachez Thrace for allowing the use of their song, Janino Horo, as background music during this episode. Warning, this podcast contains mature content, including scenes or descriptions of graphic violence, sexuality, and psychological trauma. Listener discretion is advised. The, the Rancor's Brothel presents... Impossible Landscapes. A Delta Green campaign by Dennis Detweiler. begin fiddling around trying some anagrams playing around you're, you're not able to come up with anything um you do happen to start searching zealoni specifically as opposed to searching richard zealoni right. mm. um and when you search zealoni you realize that zealoni is the color green in polish it's green what looks to be a polish guy and then more green <laughs> under the <laughs> a different shade of green though different shade of green that must be richard richard we found him. Game over. Yep. This is Tobias Zaloni. No. Berlin Art Link. Must must be his brother what or something. An unfortunate looking man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tobias. <laughs> Not that um, any of us so, are real lookers around this table anyway, but <laughs> So if if Flynn and I start start talking about, you know, demonology and stuff, like what are these what what are your guys' reactions? No, I, this is the first time I'm ever hearing about demons. Yes, I, I know, but like I wanna know what your guys' reactions would be if we and him start talking about the you occult. Your f- gourd? I'd I'd be comfortable in the conversation. Okay, cool. Um, just just wanted to get a vibe of the room. Um, if 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 Lucas is the only outcast and whatever, we know he can be the he can be the third wheel, so to say. Or my cult is twenty fourth wheel. So, <laughs> well, so I mean, he's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, a twenty by by it's only by because I gave it ten percent from something else. <laughs> yes, but but still, a tw- a twenty by the books rules is that you've dabbled in it. Like it's you know, um, mm, you've played with the Ouija board. You've then the stiff is about stiff as a so feather. So I I'm I'm basically gonna go over descriptions of both uh, uh Marbus as well as person. Um they they almost seem very sim- similar to each other, as if in what they do. Marbus is the president of hell. Yes. Um well I don't know it, if it, he's it, democratically elected. It, it, de- it depends, yeah, and it depends on what society that you that you Lucas. Twenty to twenty nine is considered a dedicated hobbyist. Oh, I thought it was just like a dabbled. Like just... Dabbler is zero to nineteen. Okay, oh. I I remember that wrong. I, I, I literally only have extra points in it because the of my decision. Man. Yeah, but still, still I mean, I'm that's fair. I mean, you got to realize that they're considering like the game, and this is one of the things that I was trying to tell you guys is it's a little different from Call of Cthulhu in that, like I said, really, if you just have twenty or thirty percent in it, sometimes you'll just get rolls. That's the this way DG works, yeah. as opposed to Call of Cthulhu. The more and more I play this, it's I realize it's a lot different than Call of Cthulhu. I think I built my character like a Call of Cthulhu character. You definitely. And now have. I'm realizing just, I should have just by just from what I know so far. Yeah, yeah. I should have. Uh, so a little bit. Uh, what we know about Marbus, which I would, you know reiterate to these two especially um marbus is the fifth spirit he is uh, the fifth spirit of the 72 he is a great president and appeareth at first in the form of a great lion but afterwards at the request of a master he putteth a human shape he answereth truly of things hidden or secret he causeth the diseases and cure cureth them <laughs> I can't read those you words. You can stop putting I I-T-H love, at the end I, of the word. I need words. more just, T-H. Just say the word. Again, he give great wisdom and knowledge in mechanical arts. Does he give or giveth? He giveth. <laughs> um, that's important. Yeah, no. Mechanical arts is really important because that, that's kind of when you start going down the rabbit hole. Because um, me- mechanical, ar- mechanical arts is an obsolete term nowadays. But back in like 
the 12th and 14th century, it gets really in depth. And there's this thing called the uh, Ars Theatrica that has, um, what's his name? Something of, uh, I can't remember his name. I, 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 I dove deep into this stuff, you guys. Like, it's, I know you guys may not believe me. You're fine. Go ahead. But, Sam um, is drinking straight out of the gala <laughs> right now. Um, but anyways, mechanical arts, because we don't, I mean, we still use mechanical arts, but not the way they did in the 20th, not 20th century, 12th, 12th century, excuse me. Um, he can change men into other shapes, and he also govern governs, I'm not going to say the TH, he governs 36 legions of spirits, and his seal is this, which I will show you guys a picture of it, and if you guys want to see it, I will. I'm looking at it on my phone. That's fine. I mean, literally any of you can Google Marbus it literally and looks the same image. It looks like an engine upside down with a cross in it. Okay. No, that's person. You're looking that, at person. Oh, sorry. I thought that's what we were talking about. But person is very similar. Similar. The only difference is I think person is higher up on the demon list. Presidents are the next to last in the chain of order. So this Ars Theatrica, if I think about like mechanical arts and transforming men into other shapes, is that like just theater? Like becoming a character, transforming the self... Give me one second, because I, I can't remember all this information that I Googled off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, is like, okay, it was Hugo, or Hugh, of St. Victor. Um, he was the one who kind of, um, he didn't necessarily invent it. Scholars think that it was invented before him, but he was the one who made it, he was the one who made it popular into what it is nowadays. Um, and just to throw it out there, just as we're going through this, I would like to point out that the Ars Goetia, Goetia, which is a real thing, and it is part of the Lesser Key of Solomon. It is. As you are Googling, something that you should be aware of, maybe you as people don't know, your players, if you have a cult, would know. This is like, um, this is bread and butter occultism. Every single cult that has yep. existed for the last yep. 600 years has taken whatever they every, want from this and manipulated every, it to their every, ends. Yeah, every major cult has tried to rewrite it has tried to, um, there's one that's recent, like 2012, who just basically, he went to the British Museum, which would be great to do, but we kind of, you know, can't do that. I mean, we could, but he went to- Quarantine for two weeks first. (laughs) Not yet. We're not there yet. (laughs) We're 2015. We're about, you know, five years away. I thought you Um, meant us, you as as people. Sorry. (laughs) I mean, in person, it would be great to do too as well. Um, But- so there was a guy, and I can't remember his name, in 2012, he basically was able to read the original transcripts from the uh, Ars Goeta. Goeta? Am I saying I that right? I don't have any idea. I think it's Ars Goeta um, is how it's pronounced. You clearly have done significant research, so I'm going to defer to you until someone says otherwise. <laughs> so the Ars Goeta, um, the original manuscripts, is in a museum in uh, in Britain. And basically, there was a guy in 2012 who basically read it and tried to translate it into a more understanding language. Because if you try to read the original transcript, at least from what I found, it is very difficult to read. As you guys could tell from me reading the description of Mor- Marbus. Um, but yeah, I mean, any major cult like uh, Aleister Crawley tried to translate it himself. Um, there was someone before Aleister Crawley, like... Golden Dawn, Thoth, uh, is it Thoth Hermes? Crowley um, was part of the Golden Dawn. Right. Well, I'm just I'm going with the organizations. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, there was like three three major heads with Aleister Crowley included in that 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 helped translate it. Um, but there was like someone in the 17th century that tried translating it. Um, but yeah, everyone kind of fit it to their own needs. But for the most part, every every revision of it is pretty accurate to the original. Um, a few things are twisted and turned. But that just is something to consider that your characters would know. Um, so I'm making sure that the players know is that what you get on Wikipedia about Marbus may be slightly different from what the Golden Dawn thinks, maybe slightly different from a document from the 17th that, century. So That description I read of Marbus has been I, – I looked up most I, – I cross-referenced it, and that's pretty much the same description. There are some differences about what he was control of as of like – you know, Wikipedia says he was control of hell, but if you look in the Scottish history, he was um, he was in control. He was the president of like the J word, right? 
Yes. I think I found that. Yes, yeah. that was that was yeah. the county. Yeah, that was the county, but the city was uh, it had a queen. Is president of Jay County. Wait, what? Hold on. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the thing to keep in mind, uh, just as you're as you're researching this, um, to describe the Ars Goeta, uh, which we'll use from here on out, because Daniel did listen to something, and I'm going to go with that. Um, for for the two of you who didn't get these clues, um, it's essentially a listing of 72 major demons, and it's very much kind of like I was discussing with Flynn, fairly almost biblical or mythological in terms of it's like so-and-so begat so-and-so so, so, who hath so there's, these things yeah. and could turn into a toad and so blah, blah, blah. The lesser, the lesser keys of Solomon is basically a... It's basically a chapter, and our Scoeta is the first chapter, and it's basically a demon encyclopedia, and it, sh- it tells you how to bind them, how to control them, and how to dimis- dismiss them, basically. Um, whereas the greater key of Solomon, which may or may not come into this if any of it comes into it at all again this is all speculation just from that one name we heard but again having the the sigil of person just makes me think differently about it Um, but there's also a greater key of solomon but that's more um that is more like celestial and like planetary spirits whereas the lesser keys of solomon is more earthly bound and demon bound like more more material plane as opposed to everything else outside the plane, if that makes sense. It's more, the the lesser key, which the demons are included, is more er- earthbound. They're more physical, earthbound presences. So as Roderick rolls up the chalkboard and begins saying... <laughs> Sorry, I know that was long. No, no. The forkboard it's, is it's out, fan- he's smoking. It's, no, no, I think it's fantastic, because I like the idea of your character, like... Pointing dramatically as he's sketching this all out, he's as got, the evening wanes on, he's got he's got like strings, strings of, strings of yarn, right. from one stacks thing to of another. books from his bookstore downstairs. Oh yeah, yeah, obsessive compulsive a bit, but that's fine. Um, he really is. <laughs> that's what, who he is. Uh, what do you for what to do? I take another long draw from the growler I brought and say, "I'm hungry. You guys want some Mediterranean tonight?" How long of a trip would it be to the Mediterranean? Hour, hour and a half to get there. We go tonight, or do we go on the first? Well, I both. Mean, I mean, out of game. You said you wanted to scope out the place. So I mean, that's that is. But my intention was to scope out and see who walked in before me. Oh, like that is the completely day of. changed. After the, yeah. Okay, I see. If only the four of us are going and have RSVP, then that makes a complete difference. Yeah, sure. I mean, if they have, you know, I, I don't know much about this restaurant. It's, you know, probably hour and a half drive, the, according to the keeper. What are the, what are the Yelp reviews? Four, Four stars. Four stars. Four stars. Four stars. Wait, is it the uh, Half Price Apps Night? Ooh. Uh, you'd have to look and see what day the 30th of August 2015 was. Uh, people are Googling it. I'm not going to Google it, too. You check the date. I'll check the notes about the apps. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume it has a bar in it, so you guys can go. And we can bring outside liquor. <laughs> I confirmed. Now we know. <laughs> Tuesday and Friday. Interesting. It's the 30th? Yep. yep. 30, 2015. It's a Sunday. Damn! Oh, oh my god, they're probably closed. <laughs> so the, the party, the party's on a Tuesday. Call ahead. <gasps> oh. Call ahead and see if they're open. Well, obviously. I can't call. I just called. <laughs> I'll call ahead and see if they're open. Yes, they're open. You find out that they're open um, from like noon till two in the morning. What are your specials today? On a Sunday? Uh, it's Boston, so I'm going to be super like just on the nose and say that the Sunday special is clam chowder. Sounds about right. Their disregard for Sunday etiquette speaks demon to me. I think we're on <laughs> if the nothing else voice. has, if nothing else has, this definitely. I does. think the Marvis coincidence. So you all go, I'm assuming, either the day before or the uh, that night. Um, you find that the re- uh, Gateway Park is um, kind of sits by its lonesome. Um, it backs up to a, a small stone-walled municipal park. So, you know, soccer fields, some running tracks, some trees, maybe a place to play football, baseball, etc. Um, obviously, it's late August in... Um, it's late August in the Northeast, so you're talking about sundown at probably seven something. I say whenever I watch Sox games late in the year, it always seems like it's almost f-ing dark at seven o'clock. So um, if you're getting there in the evening, it's going to be dark. Um, park starts to get empty. 
Um, you walk in, it's a pretty standard restaurant. There's kind of a bar off to one side. Um, you've got kind of the bar section. You've got a few tables. You can see in the back next to the bathrooms, there's obviously a door to the kitchen. And then there looks to be a place where um, in the back, sort of facing the municipal park, is um, the party rooms, the private rooms. I mean, I think we're just going to probably just approach the bar, yeah? I mean, obviously, we're, sure. we're all... Yeah. I mean, at least I'm going to be, you know, peek around as we're walking through, but... You don't notice anything unusual? I mean, it looks like a regular bar. It's half to two-thirds full. Cool. Yeah, I, sit, I want to sit down and order a drink and uh, probably some food. That's what we came here for, so... Yeah. Who's our bartender? Um, Your bartender is... I'll say it's Eduardo Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna mention my name. <laughs> be cool. We'll be paying in cash, bro. Uh, hello, what can I get? What can I get you guys? And he hands you a beer list. Um, you can see a modern, you know, decently stocked um, sort of liquor selection. The food smells okay. Um, hands you a menu. Pretty standard fare. Like I said, slightly bent towards Mediterranean cuisine, but not like. Exceptional. There's some pita chips. Right. Definitely the appetizers are like pita chips, so it's like, you know, are it we, is what it is. Are we closer to the Bay Area, or? No, probably not, because Boston, since Boston sits on the harbor, I'm going to assume that, I've never been to Boston, but I'm going to assume that the suburbs probably are obviously away from the harbor. Okay. So, yeah, I wouldn't say you're necessarily close to the water. I'm going to assume you're more inland, sort of, or would that be north and west, I would assume, from Boston Harbor. But otherwise, he will interact with you as normal. Three a couple beers if you want, a drink, Coke on tap. So the lager and a chowder? Yeah. The chowder is decent. Fairly unremarkable. But otherwise, you guys can have dinner. I'm going to order the Black Watch, which is a Scottish ale from a brewery, also known as True West Brewing Company. Okay. <laughs> Daniel orders a Black Watch. Hopefully that existed in 2015. Yeah, maybe it did. <laughs> Anachronism. I, I assume if it's open now in this day of time, it's probably been open for at least a little while. You would think that. Yeah, it definitely has an old vibe. You get the sense that it's probably that this building's been here for 30 or 40 years. We're talking about the brewery itself, oh. not, not so much the building. Anything else you'd like to do here at the... Uh... Um, I'm just going to... I don't know. Drove an hour and a half for this, so hopefully someone else has a point. Is there a, a mirror behind the bar? Yeah, probably. Okay. The bottles in front of it. Uh, other clientele in the, the place. Yeah, Where maybe another seven or eight tables full, roughly. Busy, but not busy, busy. Okay. Mostly families? Anybody? Probably. They appear to be locals. You see a lot of friendly interactions between tables and between servers and tables, so you get the okay. sense that this is probably... this is che- You've walked into Cheers. You're the only strangers in the Cheers bar. So this is... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting vibes of, like, like the most white bread, mm-hmm. like... Place yep. you could imagine, but also if it's awesome. local. <laughs> Let's say you've got you've got an older couple in the corner that you know they're very friendly to the server, and you've got you know probably in another spot you've got some kids with a family of you know five maybe. Um, you've got maybe a couple people on a date, um, but yeah, I mean it's you walk into Applebee's anywhere in the U.S. You know this is you're gonna get the same sort of interaction. Okay. The door kind of opens. Oh, hey, Joe, good to see you. And then he walks over and hangs out with his... Joe hangs out with the four other drinking buddies. I'm watching Joe very carefully. Uh, Joe appears to be in his mid-70s, probably. They've already got a beer ready for him, and it appears to be probably old war buddies or former co-workers or something. Hey, Joe, the bone chain let you out. Uh, yeah, f*** you, f*** you. You know, like... How crass. Um, Again. Anybody say Boston. Richard? Uh, anybody Richard? Any Richards? Uh, Richard, guys- not, hey, you dick. <laughs> so there might be that. Uh, no, you don't hear anyone specifically named Richard. A lot of Richies. Appears to be staffed by 10 or 12 people. You know, obviously kitchen staff in the back. Just pretty typical. Okay. Nothing crazy. Uh, like, um, well, uh, excuse me, I need to uh, uh, pay a visit to the, uh, the old office. <laughs> now, get off my stool and... Uh, Mosey on back towards the party rooms. Sure. I mean, nobody's necessarily watching him. It's kind of like most of the times at the restaurant, the doors are maybe partially open, but not like... It's not open for business, but they've kind of halfway closed them to keep them, you know... Yeah. Keep people from just necessarily wandering in there. Um, The party room is towards the back. You can see three large windows facing out towards the municipal park. Um, 
otherwise it appears to have two or three large tables that could be pushed together to make one large sort of party table. Um, 10 to 12 people probably could okay. sit in there, give or take. Probably some room, you know, uh, a present table or maybe, a you know, create kind of a buffet line maybe. Uh, but again, nothing out of the ordinary that you can notice. It smells relatively clean. All the table or all the chairs are on top of the tables, um, oh, okay. just ready for, ready for the next event that is used in there. Look under the tables, like, like at like the underside. Um, you begin peering under the tables. Um, they appear to be probably find some gum. Uh, mm. maybe someone with a knife. A kid that says, you know, Ken was here. Ken. Um, <laughs> that must be important. <laughs> I took a picture of Ken. Uh, ex- excuse me, sir. Um, can I help you? Did you see one of the servers uh, poke their head into the party room? Um, bathroom? Uh, yes, sir, around the corner. <laughs> and he points up above him where there's a sign that says restrooms pointing to the left. Oh! It could have been like health inspector, just making sure your tables are clean. No, nope. bathroom? <laughs> I was looking under this table for a place to piss. <laughs> Almost found it, but I was interrupted. As you walk by, he sort of like, you see him sort of take a quick look in behind and kind of pull the door more more close. Not closing it, but more like, uh, People at this restaurant are so judgmental. Jesus. Well, I'm going to go piss and you can let these lads. Did you say there were multiple rooms? Uh, I believe that, I have to look at the description again. I think that there are two parts. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there might be a smaller, like, it's almost like a private table area. So it would just have room for, like, five or six people. There's one that's actually, like, a party room where you could set up, like, a buffet and 12 or 15 people kind of thing. Does it look like one's already, like, in the beginning stages of being set up? No, they both look like they've probably been recently mopped and cleaned. I mean, if you walk by, they smell like, you know, cleaner, bleach, whatever. Okay. Uh, chairs are up on top of tables. Um, I think more of a this room is not to be used as opposed to, like, it's set up. But it does look like there's probably sideboards and stuff where, like, silverware and tablecloths and everything else could be pulled relatively quickly. Um, so you get the sense that at a moment's notice, you could walk in and say, hey, can we get the private party room? And you feel like they could accommodate relatively quickly. Again, just like any neighborhood restaurant. Anything else you guys want to do? I'm assuming Lucas doesn't since he left the room. Um, I'll go f- around some more. Um, but like, I'll come back to the the three of them. Hey, um, I'm gonna go smoke real quick. Um, BRB. You can go smoke, you hipster. Okay. I don't smoke. Smoke what? <laughs> so Flynn running away from the party. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go out and find those three windows. Yeah. Um, like what's What's facing the three windows? Is it like up against the municipal park? Pretty close. I mean, like maybe there's an alleyway or, uh, you know, kind of a side street. And then pretty much you hit kind of a tree line and then onto the soccer fields and everything else. Might be a small parking lot. So maybe someone could park behind this place. Um, But basically the windows sort of look out over the park. Um, So you've got nice wide angles. Okay. Um, I'm just going to like... Just kind of kick around back there, just kind of like walking around, just looking at the ground, looking up, just um, see if I notice anything. It's actually kind of in an open spot. Uh, there aren't any buildings close to uh, the restaurant. And like I said, it's the park is empty because obviously it's dark by this point. A few trees, like I said, maybe a parking lot where you could either park in the restaurant or maybe a parking lot inside the park kind of close nearby. Since obviously there's a side road or something in between these two spots. Um, so, you know, pull in from the park, park, go play soccer, hop on the jogging path, whatever. Otherwise, you see some trash. Um, probably one of the employees comes out and dumps some trash. But I mean, other than that, there's nothing crazy going on. Yeah. All right, I'll go back in. Is there anything? I mean, uh, Roderick would probably, you know, grab his beer and walk around. Um, is, is there anything that sticks out as, you know, such as like paintings or is there any kind of lettering i guess or sigils or anything that st- would stick out to him as you know for elder sign tablecloth um, green triangle do you see the unholy um symbol that is the new england patriots logo oh my god places? burn it um you see uh you see a boston bruins uh celtics you see a couple signs that say go suox um suox uh it's but, like, no that's like playing with with, with the cack and uh, and Starfinder K A C, the anyway, cock, K A C, and Starfinder the kinetic armor class, mm-hmm. Keck. 
Yeah. Tell me more See? about this playing with the CAC. <laughs> so no, you don't CAC plan. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, probably some Budweiser signs, some Sam Adams signs. <laughs> kind of what you expect in a bar. Okay. I mean, you've got some Mediterranean flair, so there are probably some paintings of, you know, uh, coastal cities with azure blue water. I mean, I have nothing in ours, so it wouldn't, wouldn't affect me anyways. I just walk right by it, probably. Do they do the flaming cheese? That's some sort of sex thing? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> it is for That's me. That's when it goes wrong. Or good. Depends on who you are. I don't think flaming or cheese is anything I want to describe in a sexual act. I mean, I don't know. People use... Who knows you know, these days? It sounds like... people it sounds use, like an STD. The people use cheese. hot candle wax, so what's wrong with flaming cheese? You know? I don't want my genitals pour, flaming. Pour that hot queso on my nips. <laughs> and, and it tastes good. At least wax you can't lick up after. I mean, you could, but it tastes bad. That's why you all need to use nacho you cheese. Use queso. We're learning a lot about Daniel today. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, any other casing that you guys would like to do? No no symbols, no odd things. Um, I, I was just, uh, Roderick would be like, Roderick is, Roderick is wondering, what'd you say? Normal bar and restaurant. Okay. Uh, they said roll something. Roderick is, um, Same. Roderick is just wondering, like, why is this the place of the meeting? So that's why he's looking for something. Because it's a run-in-the-mill, hole-in-the-wall, bl- <laughs> place. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that, but I want to know if there's a deeper reason, like... Literally, that's it. <laughs> Who's going to investigate a f***-off Mediterranean restaurant? What's what's the surrounding restaurant like? What, what what surrounds it? Nothing other than what I described to Flynn. It's park. kind of out on its own. Is there is there a forest, trees, woods, anything like that? Just that municipal park. Okay. Which probably has trees in it. Yes. Okay. Most parks do. Because... Except for industrial parks. Those tend to lack trees. If someone's going to summon something near here, it's going to be in the trees. It's not going to be out in the open, Lucas. So I'm trying to discover yeah, things. Out in the cops or copes of trees. Uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I remember that argument. What day What day was um? What day was the, the birthday party on? The first. first. Tuesday. A Tuesday. Half price apps. Half price. I have a More importantly, half price Actually, apps. I'm sorry. I don't know about you Buy fellas. one, get one free. I don't know about you fellas, but I have a feeling it's just going to be the five of us. Yeah, I feel that too, like but um, um, I count, I'm counting four. Yeah, we're meeting somebody. Yeah, you hope so. Uh, six. I mean, if you're if you're if you're counting the guy who's who who set up the meeting and the birthday party guy, that's six. Depends on whether or not someone's using an alias. It's still probably going to be a person though. It might not, it might not be his name. Is this Whatever Eduardo you say. Deacon? <laughs> Is this Eduardo right there? Yeah, I mean, he's he's behind the bar. You see him, he moves around quite a bit. He's behind the bar a little bit. He goes and talks to some patrons. You get the sense that he is in charge. Hey, Eduardo, you you work here. Uh, and, yes, and I... you're you seem to know the place really well. You don't yes, know I own it. He don't know. Oh, you owner. Yes. He don't know. Oh, shit. That, do you know? Roger's my getting buddy, drunk at this point. He Richard. don't know. Shit. That's what he's saying Daniel's at the bar. Drunk at this point. What, <laughs> <laughs> Roderick? Be f-ing cool, dude. What are you doing? He was an ass to me. He has the sh- <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it went. That's totally how it went. My buddy Richard has been going here for years. He loves this place. Uh, When's the last time he was in? Richard, um, I never remember his last name. He'll throw out a couple of names, but he doesn't say Zeloni. Uh, it's Zeloni. Richard Zeloni. Has he been and by? You see him sort of... I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't recognize the name. It sounds familiar. Hold on. And you see him kind of go back behind the bar and he goes... Oh uh, yeah, he's there's a there's a birthday party for him um, on Tuesday. Oh, but he hasn't been in. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry, I, I don't recognize the name. So it's pretty distinct. I think I'd yeah, I, yeah. I think I'd remember it. That's weird. I wonder why. He... Oh. 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 Okay, well. No, I, I and I, hmm. as I recall, the man who made the reservation uh, wasn't Mr. Zioloni. I assume it's a surprise party. Probably a friend. Yeah. Mm. Did you did you see him in person? Did oh yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what do he look like? Um, he describes to you an older African American gentleman, um, sort of uh, probably late fifties, early sixties, gray hair, beard. Uh, I believe he was a, a Mr. Marbus. And then he kind of looks up. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, um, Mr. Marbus. Yeah, he came in, uh, paid for the reservation in cash, and um, we'll call him to let him know when the room is ready." You said late fifties. Uh, yeah, late fifties, early sixties. Definitely on the on the oh, probably the older side of middle age is what he would guess. 
What did he check when he was looking at the reservation? Uh, there's probably a, a placard on the wall that kind of has, like, menu items and plans for the day and, you know. Did I see, like, like a post-it note with Zaloni on it? I'm looking for the phone number that they're going to contact him. Yeah, no, you could see that there. he's kind of consulting a chart, and it looks like, you know, maybe a ledger book or something he's opened up. It's probably on the wall, though. Like, I get the sense that it's on the wall, and it's like saying, you know, Zeloni party, 8 p.m., Marbus, 919-542, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to just quick snap up a photo of that number. Sure. He was very tall as well. You said the, you said the party was at uh, 8 p.m.? Yeah. Uh, AEP, yes. And you will be honoring the buy one, get one half off appetizers. Of course. We'll be very busy that night. Okay. I do hope more, hope more people show. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Uh, there are a couple of folks that called in to make reservations. It's polite. Not too many people have RSVP, I assume. Uh, it's not really mandatory. Well, I understand that. Uh, we just rent the room, sir. Mr. Morbus didn't specify how many people were invited? No, just one of the big party room. It'll be ready. Excellent. Well, I have eaten an entire family-sized hummus plate <laughs> and had several beers. Oh, that chowd was f***ing up my stomach. Who the f*** is going to drive us home? Who had Inez. less beers? The, uh... Inez. If you look at the, uh, the area code, Flynn, the area code is for a Boston number. Okay. I don't know that it would be more specific than that because Boston's pretty big, so I'm assuming Boston and, and its suburbs probably have maybe one or two area codes. So it's an area code for the general Boston area and possibly some of the suburbs. Uh, I've got some computer science experience. Would sure. I be able to run that number through any kind of program to maybe figure out who it belongs to? If you had access to that program, um, chances are if you're wanting to do like a reverse number lookup or something like that in a database, you're going to need somebody who has connections, i.e. bureaucracy. You're going to need logical connections to a company that would have that fair. or would be able to bolt. I have bureaucracy. That. That's fair. You all have bureaucracy. Everybody should have okay. some of it. Yeah, but... It's just a question of, are you connected to a group that would be able to look <sighs> up numbers? I am, I think. Sure. Okay. I mean, What number are we looking up? Between I mean, I've the got, four I've of got us. a decent bureaucracy, but I can't think of a logical connection. There. None we... of you are super connected into... I pay for White Pages Premium. <laughs> What, what, what are we trying to look up? You could do that. What are we trying to look up? This phone the number. The number itself. Which number? Homie. <laughs> Homie. The number I snapped. S- snapped a picture of. Snapchat. Have another beer, will you? I don't have a Snapchat. I, we got the number. Mr. For- Marvis. Mr. Marvis. These are 7.2. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Marvis. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm totally playing any character right now. Just okay. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're drunk Daniel or just playing the I'm game. So I've the only had between, the difference between drunk Daniel and playing drunk Daniel is a very <laughs> it's a, thin, such a man. thin fine line, thin gray line that just I'm goes sorry. either way. <laughs> He's like, I can call in a favor. We didn't used to allow alcohol when Matt played. Well, I mean that's a different story. <laughs> I can call in a favor. What do you need? Hold on, let me plug this into my White Pages Premium. I pay for it and I never use it. Okay, well, so I'll plug it plug into it in. White Pages Premium. Um, I'm going to presume since it is a, it is a landline, so I'm going to assume White Pages Premium probably gives you an address. Unfortunately, it's the Yellow Pages, sir. Didn't pay for that one. God. <laughs> so it gives an address. Um, the phone number is for a home in Medford. It doesn't tell Medford. you who owns the home. It just probably gives you an address would be my guess. I've never used White Pages Premium, so I'm not sure. But it would tell you it is a landline for a, a if you Google it, it's a residential district of Medford. So okay, yeah, I'll do like the, the Google Maps, Google mm-hmm. Earth search, like yep. look at the street view. What do I see? I mean, it, it, it looks like a small suburban home. You know, a, it's a it's a regular two lane street, trees, sidewalk, two story, three story homes, you know, suburban America. How close to the restaurant? Probably not super close, but I mean, they're both suburban. Like, it isn't around the corner, but it isn't like 45 minutes away either. Maybe a 10, 15 minute drive. Okay. You could literally Google, I believe the invitation says Boston, and this is Medford. So, I mean, if you Google it, you could probably find out how far Boston is from Medford. Right. Metropolitan Boston to Medford, I assume, is it's not that far. Like, So, yeah, residential address. 
Medford. Address appears to be a two-story home. What time is it? In the game? I mean, by this time, it's probably late. I mean, do you, do you want to go to the address, or do you want me to try to call in a favor? What do you mean? What favor would you call what, in? What were you trying to figure out by the white pages? Where this guy lives and who it is. Like, who... who Marvin. Lives there. Marvin, right? Marvin? Well, if he's using an alias, who the actual person is. I can call in to try to see who lives there. Okay. Do it. So, I'm going to call Wesley. Have we left the restaurant? At roll this point? bureaucracy. Parker. <laughs> Mr. Roll BS bureaucracy? is like, yeah. okay. I shouldn't have given that number. No, I'm the legit, the legit question. We should probably, have yes, we left the restaurant get at this into point? the car. Yeah, and, you probably should. Yeah. Ooh, that's an 88, so that's a fail. Question. That's an 88? That's, that's a crit fail. Oh my god, fail. Wesley doesn't fail. like you anymore. Uh, but legitimate. I still, still gotta check it off. A legitimate question, um, because I've not read... I haven't read any of these books front to front to, front to back. We we now know Zaloni is green. Correct. We know the program as the program. Do we know the program is called Delta Green in character? Like, is that what the program is actually? You called? would know. You would know that they use a green Delta on like their file folders and stuff. Okay. It's a, it is a logo that is used for the program. Right. So the fact that green is a thing and green is the name is probably a connection to the program itself. Yes. Yeah. So the program was trying to get us to come here for some reason or another, probably to help someone from what... Um, Once, when we get in the car, probably on the way home or whatever, Deacon will kind of pipe up. Have you all noticed that we're in the middle of something and not once has a handler called us? Your contact with Wesley, Wesley seems... Um, very annoyed. He's like, I, I, I'm really, really busy right now. I don't have time for this. Like, man, you got to either be in or out, and and you you wanted to be out, so you're out. So you know, I can't just be running these favors for you. And he hangs up before you can respond. That's fair. I already tried calling him in a favor a couple of days ago, so that's kind of a probably normal reaction. I'm gonna um, so Deacon, I I don't want to like show my hand too much, but um. You say handler. What exactly do you mean by that? No one's given us orders. We were thrown into the middle of this. This is not how the program works. I mean, I've only really been part of the program as a consultant, so I, I, I don't know what what you mean by. Being... Inez, fair to chime in. I mean, uh, it is definitely an odd manner of how we were contacted, and you're right. But I just assumed we'd be meeting somebody at the restaurant. It's also been my experience that they are not very forthcoming with a whole lot of information ahead of time. So I'm um, just kind of going by, uh, you know, the information as we're given. So like I said, I don't really think there's a party. It's just, it was a coded way to get us information to get here. The help me strikes me as odd. Well, yes. That's the most right frightening part of this concept. Maybe some, well, the only thing I don't understand is like, I, I haven't met, I haven't met many people from the program other than you, other than you three. Um, none that survived. I've met, I've met Sam, which you've used your first name by now. Um, I've Should met, I not have done that? You did it. I don't know. I'm just going to say I've met Sam. I've met Sam previously. Me and him have worked on something for the program, but other than that, I don't know how the program operates. I don't know what they normally do. They, they just, they just called me for information. They wanted, they wanted another person's opinion. And to something. be clear, our time with the program was... In a Brief. conference room yeah, at was, the Hilton. Yes. The coffee was cold. It's a funny choice of words, normally. I drank tea, so I, I don't know about the coffee. But anyways, um, yeah, I don't know how the program normally works. Like, since you guys have pointed it out, I've noticed, you know, that there was definitely the sigil on the invitation. But other than that, I don't know anything about a handler. or So, yeah, I mean, I guess if you guys know more, it is kind of odd. I mean, it's odd, but it's no more, I mean... Could it be someone part of the program that's in danger that, for some reason, reached out to us? But like I said, I didn't meet many, many people at the conference. It's possible. I mean, again, the message coded as help me and having that... Uh, the Green Delta. What's it symbol. called? The cipher? The whatever? Exemplar. The exemplar is included with it is is very strange. So yeah, I, I don't understand that at all. Somebody Not is... Any. I mean, we're being drawn here. We're here. So... You know, I don't see any harm to come back here in a couple of days for this "quote unquote" party. Are you wanting to fast forward then to September? 1st? I really want to go to the house. 
Oh, you want to check out the house with the number? It's an option, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's unlikely that we'll see anyone coming or going. Probably. But... Flynn, just for your uh, moleskin. Oh, my moleskin. 919 4th Street, Medford, Massachusetts. 02153. Yeah, we. I'm. I'm okay with going there. If you suggest it, I'll be like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, it is. Uh, looks like a mid twenties. Uh, two story bungalow. It is painted a peeling rust red. You All can right. tell from the Google Street View. It's like I said, it's an old school. <laughs> I was getting ready to like, say, are you googling it, Flynn? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past uh, it, Detweiler to a, have yeah. a, a rust. Uh, you know, I'd like townhouse. Mm, okay, that's. It's white. That's not but, what it is, but yeah. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual place. Damn you, Deathweiler, my immersion is broken. This is an old school bungalow, so I mean like, you know, sort of the the several steps up to a porch that's kind of got the, the wraparound overhead mm. porch with a couple more steps up to the big front door. It's, you know, very twenty style. Okay. Wait, did we go there? To the house? I told you I was okay with it if you mentioned it, but I don't know. About I didn't know if we two. were still street view describing. I was giving you the information. You guys can decide what you want. Sure. Um, it is late at night. It's like 10 p.m., right, is what he said? Yeah. I mean, should we come back in the tomorrow? morning? In the morning. Good. Tomorrow is the 29th? No, tomorrow's the 31st. Yeah, 31st. It's, it's, it's the day before the imitation party. Oh, okay. Okay. We fast forward. Well, it was the 28th, and it took you guys, you said you wanted to get there. Oh, you're right, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with coming back. In, in the morning? morning? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, in the meantime, how hard would it for, be for me to get pure gold and pure mer- mercury? <laughs> um, <laughs> It's going to take some work or some connections. Um, Do you want me to make a roll for that, or... Not sure which one to be troubled by more. <laughs> well, the pure gold is going to be expensive as f. Yeah. Um, depending on how much you want. I don't want much. Like maybe what? What? What's? What's probably the smallest amount you can get? Like an ounce, maybe. Like what are you doing? So like I'm sideways connected to this for work. An ounce of pure gold is like mm, probably twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Sixteen hundred dollars. What? How big would you say an ounce is though? Like I mean, not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> yeah. But what are you needing it for? <laughs> That that's for a need to know basis. I'm, you guys aren't included in this. <laughs> I'm just trying to help understand I how you're much you're needing. this in the car on the way home. <laughs> He's going, "Hey Google, <laughs> <laughs> hey Alexa, how do I get a ounce of gold? Gold closed today per ounce, Daniel, at eighteen hundred twenty-three dollars and twenty cents. <laughs> Yikes! What do I got to roll to see if I have that kind of money? Got two grand to scratch, man. You don't have that kind of money. Um. I'm a former I'm a former agent and have a bookstore. I mean, I can get a loan from my grandfather. He's part owner. If Lucas is a little, if Lucas is going to kill me if I give you an ounce of gold at no cost, considering what he had to go through. Um, I know I'm not saying I made my rolls. I'm no that's that's what I'm saying. Do you want me to roll for something or do you want me to? That would qualify as an unusual expense, Daniel. That's not a skill that I can roll for. It is. Is uh, it? Yeah. Then what is Mercury considered? <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. I don't even know if that's on a f***ing restricted list or something. Go uh, buy a thermometer and bring it up. That's what I was thinking. Like, I could just... I don't think that makes it with Mercury candy. anymore. They, they don't, but you <laughs> might be able to find an old thermometer on eBay or something. Go to an antique store. Um, You need to reduce uh one of your bonds by one. Ooh. Because you're going to have to... uh. You're going to have to borrow money. Okay, that makes sense. Oof. I'm going to do it from my from my grandpa, who's part owner of the bookstore. <laughs> he still. hates you anyway. So. Goddamn kid, always asking me for money. So that, that yeah, would, you definitely aren't going to need those bonds later. That would make sense. <laughs> I got I got plenty of scores in my bonds. Don't worry about me. Why do you think I'm letting you buy the f-ing gold? <laughs> <laughs> That's one point I don't have to take later. Um, I got two pencils for some. All right. So now, who wants to look up what kind of mercury did you want? <laughs> just, just like regular mercury. I mean, I guess you know, run of the mill mercury, <laughs> great know. value, gonna... <laughs> some good old quicksilver. Um, do you, Cody, know what I'm going with this or no? I have a pretty good idea, but okay. I'm just going to throw it out there that I can't wait to see how this goes poorly for you. That's fine. Um, I mean, I it says. High purity uh, mercury metal, which you could, of course, dilute, um, goes for $160 a pound. 
Oh, that's oh. a good price. Oh, well, yeah. Just, just get two get, pounds. Get two. I don't need that much. Just, just give me an ounce I'm just of curious. It. I'm just curious to see what this is. Mercury is a heavy metal, blah, blah, blah. Below is historical mercury price per flask. Um, it's upward of, according to this website, $4,000 a flask. How much is a flask, though? Quite a bit, I would assume. I don't think I, I just need like an ounce is fine. Make me a luck roll. I'm seeing prices between a hundred dollars and four thousand dollars. So is this where I call over or under? Correct. I'm gonna call mm, over. Nope, it's under. All right. In which case, then it's it's a significantly more expensive than that. No, I'm not gonna be able to get it for that much. I mean, I guess. I mean, I, I would take another point from one of your bonds, <laughs> Grandpa. Okay, I'll do that. Excellent. Two points off of Grandpa. <laughs> The other bonds don't make sense to borrow money from, so... Okay, there's that. Uh, so, yeah, you've got what you need. Uh, somebody else asked me a question. Are we fast-forwarding to the next day, then? Sure. All right. Yeah. Daniel spends some time figuring out how he's going to get that. Um, yeah, uh, you can drive up to the address if you want. Um, seems to be a typical, typical suburban neighborhood. You've got people walking dogs. Um, mom's pushing kids in strollers. It's a nice day out. Um you know, house appears to be quiet, no lights on, no movement. So, any cars in the parking lot? Or parking, uh, what do you call it? Driveway. Drive. <laughs> what do you call the that? The residential parking lot? <laughs> uh, Did you say the house was kind of run down or just rust colored? Uh, I mean, it's it's rusty. It's like painted brick. It's like a rust colored, um, but the paint is definitely flaking. Some of the bricks are, it's in disrepair. It's not okay. like... It's maybe a little shabby, but it's not like falling apart kind of thing. What about um, the grounds? Do the grounds look kept? Uh, not not particularly, but it is like I'm sure September in um Boston, it's starting to cool down a little bit, so I'm sure the grass is probably getting ready to go into hibernation. If not, but no, the lawn seems high-ish. There, it, what time are you guys getting there? First thing in the morning, 10 o'clock, noon. If it's an hour and a half drive, probably like 10, 10.30. Okay. Yeah. There is no car in the residential parking lot, nor on the street in front of the house. It does look like there's a driveway that leads up to the back of the house. Well, and you get the sense there's probably a back porch or something, backyard area. And it's, it's, it's Monday now, right? So, I mean, maybe the person's at work? Correct. Person. Whatever. I mean, humanoid, whatever you want to call it. Demon in human skin. There we go. The house is dark, but it is 10 o'clock on a sunny day, and it doesn't appear that anyone's in the driveway, so okay. not unusual. And you asked if, if if the, like, if it's been kept up, like, with the yard and stuff? It looks unkempt. It's not overgrown jungle, but it definitely, much like the house, it's not been mowed in a number of weeks. Um, just like the house hasn't been painted in a number of years. So what what do you want to get from this? Like what do you what do you want what are you trying to do? I just want to see who invited us to the restaurant. I want to know the man or woman behind Mr. Marvis. Well, I mean, know what we're we're heading into. He goes by Mr. So um <laughs> and maybe they just used that name because they knew it would grab most of our attention. Except for, you know, the soldier over here who Well, we need somebody to shoot stuff. <laughs> maybe, guessing. I mean, yeah. I mean, if we if we all recognize that the program, then I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, do you want to dive further into this than what we can right now? Because it looks up here, nobody's home. Oh no, I feel crazy now. I feel okay, crazy. just now. <laughs> I don't know who's driving the car. Is there a name on the mailbox? No. Good question. Um, I don't. It doesn't wanna... actually appear to me be a mailbox. I'll say. I'll say me. Well, Probably. Does anybody have a drive skill? Nobody no, has mailboxes. See, well, see, I don't want a meta game, but I assume the person who has the best drive skill probably would have offered to drive. But uh, there are no mailboxes at all, up and down. You get the sense that probably uh, again they're older homes, so they probably either have mail slots on the door or yeah. somebody goes up and puts it on the porch. I only have base drive, so as the skill. I don't know about these two, but what's your drive skill? Uh, just the twenty. It's thirty, isn't it? It is 20. 20. Dodge is 30. I got 40. Lucas is driving. (laughs) You volunteered, Lucas, for having the highest rating. Stop drinking. Well, I was going to say, at least just not your car, since you would have the local car. I mean, he could drive my car as a rental. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but he could drive my car. I don't care. It's it's probably Uh, probably nothing special. I'm not worried about it getting, you know. Lucas, make me a D100 roll. 26. 
what else do you guys like to do? And again, I'm asking Sam, like, do you want to, you know, delve further into this place? Then, I mean, up here's no one's home. Are there people walking dogs nearby? I mean, every so often. It's a quiet street. Like, maybe every... You, a car passes by while you guys are talking. Like, it's it's a suburban neighborhood. You see some people uh, getting out, um, uh, probably not doing flowers at this point, but, you know, tending the yard, you know, picking up sticks and stuff. Like, it's a suburban yeah. neighborhood. There are people around. I'll, I'll get out and go to um, someone who's, like, in their yard or... Please do not ask some random person if they know that some other random person lives in this house. <laughs> Are you going to tell me that? Yes. You don't want to find out? You think they're going to tell you. It, some stranger walk up it, to them. Hey, he lives in this house. No, 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 no. I mean, if he, I ask like he, a f***ing idiot. Yes, he then... can't ask that way. If he asks a certain way, it'll be okay. Oh, uh, but meanwhile. Please. As I get out my popcorn and wait meanwhile, for this interaction. Meanwhile, I want to stealth out up to the house. <laughs> roll, a, roll a stealth, please. Are you staying in the car, Deacon? Oh, I'm staying in the oh, car. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 81. Perfect. That's a Make fail. sure you uh, tick the ones you fail. Yep, that is a fail. I failed everything so far this session, so... <laughs> On the right track. Okay. Uh, you are going up to the house. Yep. You are crouching in the bright sunshine. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Sneaking across. <laughs> Where'd Roderick go? I don't know. I can't I even see feel him. Like, Doing um, your breath exercises and screaming, I am the knight. Um, are you going to the front or the like, back of the house? I feel like Drax right now. <laughs> you can see me? <laughs> are you going to the front or the back? Um, well, where do we where do we pull in at? We pulled in the front, I assume, right? I assume you're sitting on the street. Like, I assume Lucas you didn't is pull driving. into his driveway. Where'd you drive us to? I'm on the street. I'm not in the driveway. Okay. Was this a in the middle of the street corner lot? Uh, in middle street. So if, if there are houses on both sides, it also, it doesn't look like there's a lot of backyard. It looks like it butts up pretty quickly to the people on the other road. So if, if he pulled, if he pulled up in the driveway, then I I'm going to- I did not. You did not? You said you no, did? I'm in the street. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to try to probably sneak to the side of the house and make my way towards the back, depending on what I see. What was the number I gave you? 919? <laughs> I think so. Uh, 9919. Uh, okay. I'm going to pause my- my approach because I don't want to be like, say, ma'am, who lives over there? Yeah, that house that that man is obviously sneaking up to and trying to break into. I figured it was going to happen simultaneously, but oh, okay. I'm, I mean, if I see you <laughs> sneaking up. With I'll an 81, like, you probably seen me sneaking Christ, up. Christ, <laughs> I'll get back in the car. Trips over a hose. Trips over something that's not even there. It's just, <gasps> it's just trips stumbles so just kind of an idea so you're going to the front door you said no i said the side moving towards the back depending on what i see okay you can just walk right up the driveway that's fine or you can go to the side yard uh we'll say that the person at 917 is is working in his yard if if we if we're on the street then i'm going to come out on the side the right side there yeah and i'm going to work, work my way up north towards the back okay you walk around the side of a house do I see anything? Any windows? Any yeah, open? there. I mean, it's a house. There are windows on yeah. most sides of it. D does it have There's curtains? Suspicious. Is it is it no obscure? Windows. Can I can I look in the windows? Um, it looks like as you walk around, you're going this way or this way, clockwise or counterclockwise around the well, house. If if we're parking in the street right there, we're parking where the X is. Oh, okay, then I'm going to do um counterclockwise as you go counterclockwise it looks like there's a chimney or something on this side so you get the sense that that's probably living room dining room parlor some such um there is kind of an outcropped building what do, what do i want to call that um not a vestibule uh kind of like a you get the they, they kind of build out an extended like place to put almost like a table or a built in yeah. like a breakfast vestibule? nook or something I, it's called, I but it's sort of an outcropping, so it's like a series of six-paneled windows where it's pushed out from the side of the house, okay. so you would probably assume dining room or kitchen on that side, um, probably. And as you walk around, you can see that there is a stoop with a back porch. Are there not, any, a, not a back porch, just a stoop leading up to a back door. Are there any lights on? Are there? Is there any signs of presence? Anyone in there? I mean, nope. does, does it look like it's lived in? Is there, you know, furniture, tables? It's very dark. It's hard to see in there. Um, lots of curtains. Uh, not gonna... like lots of curtains, but the curtains are the curtains are not drawn, but they are draped around the sides. I mean, you can go peek in the windows if you want. I'm going to try to, yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to look in and see if I see anything. And I'm just going to keep walking around until, you know, no, nothing. You, 
you don't really notice anything. Kind of like you said, or kind of like I said, there's a back porch. You can see a couple of windows on this side, and there are almost no windows on this western side. All right, and then I'm going to go to the. I'm going to go to the. If, if I don't see anything of interest, or I can't peek in anything and see anything, I'm going to go to the 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 road, and I'm just going to kind of like look at my phone. Okay. I'm going to while he's heading back there. I'm going to call the number. Okay. Daniel, make a listen roll. Do they have a listen on here? No. Uh, alertness. Sorry. Okay. Let's say I didn't see listen on. Here. I'm defaulting to Call of Cthulhu. Um, that's a fifty over forty. Okay. Uh, you just, Flynn, it just rings. It rings. It rings. It rings. It rings. It rings. No answering machine. Nope. Assuming. It just ring, ring. Okay. Ring. End call. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm just going to stand there up front and um, look at my phone for a while, and then I'm going to proceed to the car. Okay. Doesn't appear anybody's home, from what I could tell. So what next? About that time, somebody bangs on the yeah. uh, on the side window. Our title track and additional musical arrangements were provided by friend of the podcast, Ian Shannon. Find more of his work at sleepforthewearied.com. Like what you heard? Check out more episodes online at rancorsbrothel.com or the Rancors Brothel on Facebook. You can also interact with other listeners at the fans of the Rancors Brothel Facebook page. Want to contact us? Reach out to at rancors underscore brothel on Twitter or via email at therancorsbrothel at gmail.com. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Much love, everyone. Yeah.